Welcome back Tech Newbies, my name is Don. Let me be the first to greet you a very happy new year. As this very trying year that is 2020 draws to a close, let us take a look at the top 10 tech, gadgets, and gears that I bought for this 2020. Let's go. Tech Newbies Starting off with number 10, we have the Andover Multifunction LED Lights. These LED lights are hot shoe mountable. It uses a USB-C port for charging and has two output power, low and high. I bought two of these to help in lighting my videos. Before this, in my very first few videos, I used this desk lamp, which is not enough since we have a dark room. Hence, I was able only to film during the daytime. These Andover lights let me shoot at night for a more quiet environment and better audio. At number 9, we have the very first tripod that I bought in my entire life. The Manfrotto B3 Advanced. I have had a Canon EOS 400D as my first ever DSLR, but at that time, having a tripod was not a necessity. Having bought a mirrorless camera in the way I shoot videos for YouTube, I definitely need a tripod now. Prior to having this tripod, all I had was a flimsy light stand that came free with my ring light that was okay then since I was just using a mobile phone. I wouldn't want to risk my camera falling off because I was cheap enough to use a makeshift light stand as my tripod. Its legs are tall enough for the overhead shots that I need to shoot for my videos. Its legs has three positions to lock in which gives me flexibility in any situation that may arise. Plus, it's a Manfrotto, one of the most popular brands for tripods. At number 8, we have the Sonoff RF. This is the same as the Sonoff Basic which I featured in this channel. The only difference is that this one is RF capable, meaning you can control it with a 433 MHz RF remote. I've installed this as a switch on my drive light where I park my motorcycle to deter rats. With this, I'm able to automate what time it would turn on at night and what time it would turn off during the day. I could also integrate this with both Alexa and Google Home for voice command capability. Hey Google, turn off drive light. Okay, turning the drive light off. Alexa, turn on drive light. Okay. And with the RF functionality, I programmed the remote so I could turn the lights on or off when I'm outside the house. At number 7, we have the RF Relay Receiver Module and RF Remote. This was actually the first tech I bought in 2020 and installed this on my motorcycle for added security. How does this work? My motorcycle has a built-in side stand switch, meaning whenever the side stand is deployed, the engine won't turn on. Or if the engine is already running, deploying the side stand turns off the engine. I've installed this in line with that side stand switch. If for some reason, someone was able to turn on the ignition key of my motorcycle, they still need to trigger this remote for them to start the motorcycle. Plus, as an added security, I've installed a toggle switch which I place secretly within my motorcycle. So in order for you to start my motorcycle, you have to turn on that toggle switch, turn on the ignition key, and trigger this remote for you to be able to start it. I know it's a bit overkill, but it gives me peace of mind whenever I park my motorcycle in a parking area. If you want me to feature this tech on my channel, comment them on the comment section below. Coming in at number 6, we have the Xiaomi Wow Stick. For someone who loves to tinker and do small repairs, this thing is a godsend. It speeds up the teardown, repair, and assembly times. I really wished I bought this earlier, especially during the time when I assembled my 3D printer which took a whopping 8 hours. And with this tool, there are no more wrist pain after a long repair hours. Before we proceed to the top 5, according to YouTube analytics, there's only a small fraction of you watching these videos are subscribed to my channel. Click on that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get notified of our videos. Your help is very much appreciated. At number 5, we have the Philippine exclusive Seiko Tobataha Reef Monster. As an avid Seiko collector, this has got to be on the list. The Seiko Monster is one of the most iconic designs of Seiko. The SRP307, which is the second gen monster, was one of the first Seikos I had. The aggressively designed rotating bezel, the sharp tooth hour indices, and the bright loom 
got me hooked. This model started me into collecting Seiko. And when it was announced that they are going to release a Philippine exclusive monster, I told myself that no matter what happens, I have got to get me one of these. On this iteration, Seiko removed some of the gnarly edges on the blue bezel, giving it a bit of a tamed look. And that yellowish gradient watch face resembles the colors of the corals found in Tubataha Reef. It has a two-tone metal bracelet of steel and rose gold, which matches the crown. It also comes with a blue silicone strap. Truly, this is a keeper. With this model, Seiko finally acknowledged the Philippines as one of its important markets. Here's to more Philippine exclusive releases in the future. At number 4, we have the Occidental PC for the Wi-Fi. This was supposed to be my original NAS build but was scrapped midway because of ECC RAM. I was thinking of selling these parts to recoup some of the money that I have spent. But as fate would have it, using these excess PC parts to build a new PC was money well spent. To be honest, I haven't used a desktop in ages. My last PC was powered by an Intel Core 2 Duo E66 processor. This PC is currently being used by my wife during daytime for her work and I use this as my primary editing rig at night time. Never would I thought that I need another desktop PC, but the size of the monitor alone was enough to convince me that I still need to have a PC at home. This PC almost rendered my laptop useless. At number 3, we have the Sony A6400 kit and the Sigma 16mm f1.4 DCDN lens. My first videos on YouTube were shot completely using this Huawei P20 Pro. But as I go along, one of the major hurdles that I have had was not seeing the frame during filming. This often resulted in a lot of shots that were out of frame, which would mean that I have need to reshoot again. So I decided it's time to get a dedicated camera for YouTube. I'm not saying that you need a dedicated camera to start creating content. We all have to make the most of what we have when we start our channel. In my case, having a dedicated camera makes me produce my content more efficiently. One of the main criteria for choosing a camera was that it has to have at least a flip screen so I could frame my shots properly. As I did my research, I ended up buying the Sony A6400. The Sigma 16mm f1.4 was an upgrade that I could have foregone, but I wanted a bigger aperture lens for those times when I need to shoot in low light conditions. Together, these two have been my primary tool for shooting videos for YouTube. I'm still going to explore this and hopefully can improve the quality of my content. Coming in at number two, we have iPad 8 Gen, and Apple Pencil. This is actually not mine, as I am not an Apple user. I bought this as a Christmas gift to our daughter who loves to draw. Ever since she first learned how to hold a pen, drawing has been her favorite hobby. We even had our walls repainted because she used to draw on it when she was little. Be it at an exhibit, a restaurant, or even in a retail store, she draws every time. It doesn't matter what medium it is as long as she can draw she will. As a father, I wanted to support my daughter in whatever interests she has, help her hone her skills. And now that she's on her teens, she's into digital art. As parents, we wanted to teach our kid the value of hard work, that you can achieve anything for as long as you put effort into it. Every Christmas, she can ask for a gift that mom and dad would get for her, provided she gets high grades in school. This is our reward system that encourages our child to do her best at school and instill in her the values of working hard for the things she wants. We never have to push her to study hard. She does on her own, knowing that she'll get rewarded for her efforts. And this Christmas, her request was that iPad and Apple Pencil. The look of joy, pride, and sense of fulfillment in her eyes was priceless when she got the iPad and the Apple Pencil. And for my number one purchase this year, it's my budget NAS build. I've been wanting to build a NAS for quite some time now, but I had to hold off for a few years, surviving with just my laptop storage. And when I finally decided to push through with this, the pandemic hits. This was probably the most challenging build I did, given the circumstances, the quarantine, and the parts shortage at that time. And because of the pandemic and this build, out of boredom from the quarantine, I decided to document the build and start a YouTube channel to give myself something to do to kill time, if you will. With my selfie stick and trusty phone in hand, I started testing how can I set up an overhead shot for filming the build. A few twist ties here and there and I'm off to filming. Honestly, being in YouTube is tough from conceptualizing a video to the actual production to getting views and subscribers. There were times that I wanted to quit but nothing compares to that feeling of completing a video and publishing it. Something that hopefully you, the viewers, might learn a thing or two. 
which is the primary purpose of creating this channel. And now that I'm doing videos on YouTube, I have an NAS where I can dump all my finished projects. Funny how I started YouTube building this NAS and now I'm using this NAS to save all my finished YouTube projects. Well, that's my top 10 in 2020. For the upcoming year, what's your New Year's resolution? For me, it's this. This will help me get a better perspective of the upcoming year. Well, actually, it's just a fancy way of saying that I am getting old. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Keep safe. Peace.